Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today we've got another episode of This Week in EDM. It's been about three weeks, I think, since I last did one, so sorry about that, but here we go. This is for songs of July 12th to 18th, 2021, and we're going to go over songs that I found interesting or songs that came out this week in EDM. There is 22 of them, and it is also a list, goes from the bottom to the top, with the last song in this video being my favorite of the week, so let's get into it. Song number one in the don't bother category or bad. Songs I just think are bad. <laughs> uh, we've got Scars by Nightmare featuring Young Pinch. Uh, first of all, I don't really like mumble rap or anything close to that in any nature. And Young Pinch uh, is included in that. It's sort of like a half mumble rap. Uh, so it's already a massive turnoff for me, but those vocal chops uh, were the nail in the coffin that the song just sucked. Uh, when Nightmare tries to make uh, pop or commercial friendly tracks, I think it's easily his worst stuff. Uh, next up, we've got Noise Heaven by Dada Life. Uh, I used to be a big supporter and advocate that Dada Life was just a giant in the big room house scene, but uh, this track is really not good, and they haven't done a ton in the past, and so they're sort of just pew, going downhill. Uh, the main melody line is quite annoying, and overall, and the overall tone of the track is just boring. I would pass up on a listen to this track. That's it for the Don't Bother category. Up next is the Neutral category. Songs I think maybe you guys will enjoy. Who knows? Depends on taste, I think, at this point. Uh, Heartbreak Anthem, the Chami remix by Galantis, David Guetta, and Little Mix. Uh, this Chami mix feels uh, really empty. The drop sections are okay in that sense, but those verses feel really awkward, especially to... Uh, with those vocals, it just feels like it's really empty. Uh, and the drops aren't really super interesting. Uh, with Zero, with Year Zero having come out uh, fairly recently, I think he's sort of running out of his clean sounding future house music. And uh, he's sort of done all of his little niche music that he did at this point. He's done it all, I think. And so I'm just not a fan. Up next, Arcadia, the Fat Rat. Uh, I'll start off by saying I haven't really loved the Fat Rat in the past. Uh, his songs feel a bit tad cheesy and kiddish to me. And uh, I feel like this is very much this track, childish and like cheesy. Uh, honestly, this song could be a soundtrack for a Disney ride and I don't feel like it's overly creative or doing anything really unique. Um, I'm pretty much just not a Fat Rat fan, I think though. So not, not a fan for me, which is why I was just in the neutral category. Uh, Elements of the New Life is next by Verwest and Tiesto. Uh, I was definitely underwhelmed from this track. Uh, it has a very laid back, chill house tune to it, but I think uh, there really just is nothing exciting happening at all. Uh, nothing interesting, nothing exciting, nothing to call home about. Uh, but it's just, uh, and it's not just because it's chill though, because I listen to a lot of chill music and I love chill music. Uh, this track is just boring. So it's neutral. Up next is the Silver Lining or Silver Lining by Tokyo Machine and End of the World. Uh, Tokyo Machine has taken a substantially more pop uh, and future based approach to music as of late, particularly with this track and also Last Summer, which came out fairly recently. It's not inherently bad, but I think there is just better future based stuff that sounds like this out there. Uh, I haven't listened to anything from End of the World either beforehand, so I don't really, I can't tell how much of this song is them versus Tokyo Machine. Up next is Ready to Love by Kashmir. Uh, this is a really basic commercial house track uh, with only one neat, with one really interesting thing, that just being the saxophone. I wouldn't really say it's, I don't mean really interesting, I just mean one interesting thing. Uh, I think that house songs like this had their time, but nowadays I don't really know why someone would listen to this over anything more creative or unique. Uh, to take on, yeah. Uh, songs like this just aren't, are just made for summer festivals and they aren't really my jam anymore, so I, I wasn't a fan. Up next, Alive by Oblivion. Uh, you know, I did enjoy this track, but uh, it's from a fairly up and coming artist there, Oblivion, uh, but I just don't think it's really for me. Uh, it felt like she was trying to do a little bit too much with this track, in my opinion. There's a bunch of totally different tonal elements of the track, and I thought they just didn't blend well together, and overall, uh, I just thought the song was okay at best. Up next, Gloves by St. Punk and Matt Andrew. Uh, this new St. Punk track has a lot of inspiration from uh, pop rock, actually. Matt McAndrew offers a vocal performance very reminiscent of that of like an Adam Lambert song. Uh, the track does have uh, a lot of drive, especially with that constant bass line, and it feels very much like a revolution or like tough guy anthem. Uh, it was a nice little change of pace from St. Punk's normal style, but uh, overall it was, it was okay. 
Up next is MS69 by Tony Romera, single number two from the upcoming Introspection album. I think it's definitely better than the first. It's got a little bit more of an electric sting to it and has some interesting funk elements. Uh, it's definitely a unique track and reminds me, reminds me a lot of Good Times Ahead, actually, if it was just a little bit heavier. Up next is in the good category, the songs that I think are good. From this point on, I think that regardless of your listening preference, I, th I think the songs are good. Uh, first up is Hardwired by Shock One and Raya Lee. Uh, for a Shock One track, I was surprised how mellow it was and actually smooth. Um, it's a dance floor drum and bass track that doesn't absolutely go bananas like Shock One normally does. Uh, and he's kind of pulled back a little bit more and has a more... It's a tamer track than I'm used to hearing from Shock One. Well, I do love the craziness of normal Shock One, this was a still a pretty good drum and bass track. Up next is Reality by Volant and Volant, Volant, Volant? I actually don't know how to say that. Volant, Volant and Integra. Uh, space drum and bass is the absolute best way to describe this track. It's just smooth and leans into the liquid drum and bass side of things as well. It's a really pleasant song that's packaged with a solid atmosphere. It's nothing crazy, but it is a solid tune. Up next is Fading Wind by Faint. Uh, I definitely appreciate Faint and all that he does, but I've really been, uh, haven't really been the hugest fan of his, I would say. He's got a few big hits for me here and there, but for the most part, all of his songs are like between a six and eight out of 10 for me personally. Uh, this is just another one of those. It's a solid DNB track with good vocals and thankfully an almost five minute runtime. I do like the longer songs. Up next is Catch Me, the Sound Remedy edit, actually, originally by Sound Remedy and Zan Griffin. Uh, Sound Remedy had a great edit of this track uh, from originally with him and Zan Griffin. Uh, it's got some more oomph to it, uh, to that melodic nature of the original, and has those uh, jagged synths that bring in more power onto the actual track. Uh, and I would say it's probably one of the best Sound Remedy tracks as of late, in my opinion. Up next is You and Me by Cloud Nun, the last single sort of to be released on the Last Train Home EP. You and Me feels like classic Cloud Nun at this point. It's a deep house track with a lot of garage elements littered throughout. Uh, and while it wasn't my favorite from the EP, it was definitely a solid cut. Up next is Be OK by OK, Elohim, and Flux Pavilion, a star-studded trio of producers here that uh, have just put out an above-average track for me. Uh, it's lighthearted and fun, but really nothing more than that. It's a solid blending of all three styles of production here, which is why I don't think it actually doesn't go as crazy as it could have. Um, but I really did enjoy the track. I just think it could have maybe been a little bit better. Up next, we have The Paper Owl by AU5 featuring Arali. Uh, another AU5 classic, it seems. Uh, the lighter approach to his classic mellow dub style is great. Uh, and that isn't to say that I don't like the stuff like Always a Nightmare or Only in a Dream, but I do like the more kind of change in pace from him here, not going as crashing and heavy a mellow dub as he normally does in the past. So I was a fan. Up next, I'm Yours by Vanek and Sylvie Cox. The first single off of Vanek's debut album is here and with some force. Vanek has always had this unique kind of style of future bass that is both heavy and almost borderline mellow dub and has been a niche that I've loved for quite some time. Uh, this track has a lot of strong movements in it and Sylvie Cox's vocals are great. Uh, I've always thought that the kind of 1930s style vocal performances have worked really well with Vanek and this song is really no exception. I'm excited to hear what the album's going to sound like at this point. Up next, uh, we've got In My Mind by Elenium, Excision, and Haleen. Fallen Embers, Elenium's fourth album, is out now, and uh, this is the non-single I sort of picked for this week, uh, and it was actually my favorite on the Fallen Embers album. I won't get into the album right now. I'm hopefully going to do a video on that in some time this week, but let's talk about the song. Uh, I've always enjoyed Haleen's vocals and Excision's productions, and when paired all together with Elenium, uh, I've said that very different twice, Elenium and Elenium, but <laughs> who knows? Uh, when paired with Elenium's mellow dub style, I thought it was a recipe for success. I particularly loved the more uh, Excision style second drop, and I thought it actually fits the tone of the track better than the other drops did. So, I like that. Up next, uh, the number three song of, no, number four song of the week is uh, When the Summer Dies by Deadmau5 and Lights. Uh, this track felt 
quite electrical and mechanical and I am all for it. It's got a nice five minute runtime and while it could have easily felt repetitive, I've given it a couple of listens at this point and I really haven't gotten bored of it at this point, which is good because I feel like this is one that you really could get bored of quite easily. I'm also always a fan of Lights' as vocals and I think she complements the production quite a bit. So big fan. The number three track of the week, in my opinion, is Get Lost by Maja and Sharks. Uh, Maja often does this really experimental music that I'm not always on board with, but when she's got someone like Sharks to balance her out, I enjoy it a lot more. This is a chill trap style track with solid vocals and a cool message behind it. And while this is uh, a lot of very basic sounds and movements of the song, I felt like it did feel unique to some extent. The runner-up song for this week is It Gets Better by Swedish House Mafia. The trio is back with a triumphant return after nine years away. Uh, this new thing single feels like a breath of fresh air uh, within a genre that needs some revitalization. Please, I need some different, better house in my life. Uh, and so this is a powerful song with strong movements and a killer cowbell drop. And so I've liked it a lot. You can see my reaction hopefully up here. Uh, finally, the best song of the week uh, actually surprised me. It is Rattle Your Bones by Volt and Slushy. Uh, holy crap, this song is insane and I love all of it. From the creepy little girl vocals to Rattle Your Bones sample and the absolutely bongers dubstep drop, uh, this was a roller coaster of hype that was right up my alley. Uh, this was an instant hit for me and we'll have to see if uh, this song really stands the test of time at this point. But that was it for this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, what you thought of these songs. If there's other artists that came out with stuff, let me know in the link below, or not the link, in the comment section below, and I will hopefully get their name a part of my list of stuff to look at for weeks prior, or not weeks prior, weeks in the future. Wow, my words right now. I'm just gonna end it here. I'm Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video. 